biggest change that I've tried to make is space the kids out as much as I possibly can. Um, you know, it's kind of a challenge because we don't necessarily have the largest classrooms and you know, a lot of our teachers are still dealing with 20 plus kids in a room. So in terms of trying to keep us all six feet apart or more, it's been a challenge, um, but I try to do the best that I can to possibly space the kids out, um, give myself enough space in the classroom so that I feel comfortable. Um, but I think the biggest thing is trying to give them uh, uh, enough tools uh, in terms of sanitation to, to feel comfortable in the classroom as though they kind of at least can control the, the small space that they're in. So I've rearranged my room so that my desks are no longer in groups, they're in rows now. And at the end of every class period, we stop and wipe down every single surface to make sure it's clean for the next group of students. I think students, if they really want to feel comfortable, should bring what they need in order to really truly feel as though their area is clean. And so what I mean by that is we have tools available for them. We have resources available for them, uh, but to always make sure that they're feeling comfortable and safe and sanitized in their own personal space, bring your own hand sanitizer, bring your own wipes if you need wipes. Um, bring your own gloves and that way you can always ensure that no matter where you are on campus you feel safe um, and I would definitely make sure don't be like me and have a very nice fitting mask. Um, well they should bring their mask and wear it correctly over their nose and their mouth um, and I guess if they wanted to bring some wipes or some hand sanitizer just in case some the classroom doesn't have enough they could do that as well. I think the only way I can make school as normal as possible is to be as normal as I possibly can in my normal teaching routine. And I think what I mean by that is um, I've got to make sure that I bring the same energy that I bring no matter what. Uh, I think if there's one thing that I pride myself on uh, in my teaching, I'm going to try to give those kids as much as I possibly can for that block of time. And uh, I'll do what I can in terms of trying to make them feel comfortable and, and safe and, and I guess sanitary is the word that we'd probably want to throw out there. Um, but in the end, I want to make sure that when they come in here, they know that I'm going to be uh, everything that I can be for them in this moment and be the teacher that they need me to be right now. Um, well, it's all about making sure that everybody feels at home and welcome and included. So that doesn't have to change just because a lot of the structures have changed. So I guess that's the biggest thing for me is trying to make everybody feel comfortable while they're here. Transition to teaching e-learning in brick and mortar has been a struggle, I think, for all of us. Um, I think if we have to focus on one task at a time, we can do that job very effectively. But having to try to, try, try to split ourselves into two separate areas, it's, it's a big challenge. And I know it's a challenge for me to be able to give a, a high quality of education to my, my kids online and still take care of the kids that are actually in my classroom. Uh, so that is going to be... That's going to be a transition that's going to take us several weeks to really kind of get into a rhythm with and really develop a cadence. And um, I'm hoping that by the end of this semester, we get everybody back on campus and, and we can uh, get everybody back in the classroom in a safe manner. Uh, but I know that by the end of this semester, we can at least get into a good rhythm and the kids that are online and at home can still get a, a really good education too. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of changes there. So I've it's difficult to find a way to balance teaching online and in person to make sure that everybody gets what they need from me. And um, Canvas is new. I've been using Edsby for a while, so that's uh, that's been a transition as well. But luckily, everyone's been really patient while I try to, parents and students have been really patient while I try to make these adjustments. directional signage in the halls made some hallways one way um, lunches are just grab and go we gave you guys those masks so that at all times students are able to wear masks on campus and daily the teachers are getting um, replenishments of their cleaning supplies for their classrooms just to, to help them keep their rooms sanitary also you'll notice that there's a lot fewer students on campus a lot of people are, are utilizing that e-learning option to help with that social distancing very specific guidelines from the district as far as the, the kind of isolation of that student, 
following up with the contact tracing, documenting everyone who could have come in contact with that student, um, just following certain procedures to make sure that everyone is aware of their own kind of status as far as health and safety goes. And we follow that procedure anytime that there's even a question. So obviously we're all hoping that the number of positive cases declines and moving forward, you know, the district is continuing to work with medical professionals to decide what our next steps would be um, on the larger scale and moving into semester two, they'll look at those numbers and then decide what our options are as a campus moving forward. into the second semester, the school board, the state level politicians, as well as our superintendent will all be meeting. They'll meet with those medical professionals that they've been discussing all of these different plans with along the way, and they'll set another plan in motion for semester two. Whether that is, you know, everybody's on campus or continuing with the e-learning will be totally dependent on what those medical professionals say and kind of what our status is health-wise at that time. Thank you.